Hello everyone, and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice can be good and clear. Please let me know if you have any problem from your side. Today our topic is very simple. If you look at the previous video I just made uh, two days ago, uh, we have Muslim comments. And usually, you know, I don't really delete Muslim co uh, comments unless it is a spam. Uh, but you notice always that Muslim comments, they don't really refute us, but they insult Jesus. And then you might ask yourself, how those Muslims, they always claim that uh, they say, uh, Isa, peace upon him. Uh, Jesus, peace be upon him. Uh, you know, you hear all those Muslim uh, YouTubers when they speak about uh, uh, so-called Isa, uh, Aka Jesus, uh, they say, peace be upon him. But what we see really, in reality, that this is another form of deception. This is a guy, from a, uh, he, is an, uh, he is an admin in a channel called Dawah channel, and he always posts about his channel. And he is posting what the Jews say is about Jesus. Uh, Jesus is a, a person of a sexual immoral. Uh, he worshipped brick. A black stone kisser is posting for us that a Jesus, he worshipped a brick, and he was sexual immoral. A person who for Muhammad who go after children. Uh, but the important for me is not what the uh, Jew he say, if this is true or not. The important is that this person is posting this for what reason? He's a Muslim, remember. Why he is posting this? He is saying to you that your Jesus, you know the rest. And this is telling us how much hate the followers of Muhammad they have to Jesus. Do you think there's somebody, he claimed that he follow a man, his name is Muhammad, Najis Muhammad. He claimed that this religion respects Jesus. They speak greatly about him. He will post this. What is the purpose of this? But look how much hate they have to Jesus to the point they insulted their religion. And actually, I did pin this message in my previous video, I put it in the top so every Christian will see it before they delete it. Their God in the Quran, in the filthy Quran, says in chapter 19, verse 19, that the angel came to Mary and he wanted to deliver to her a message from Allah of a gift of a holy son. What did Abdul say to us? Jesus is born of a sexual immorality, immoral. He worshipped bricks. He is a filthy man. Uh, he went to Egypt to learn magic to do miracles. But look what you did. If the Jews wrote this, they admitted that Jesus did amazing miracles. And all of us, we knew that this magic is just a joke. What magic? Resurrecting people from death is a magic. But look what happened now. If you are posting because you agree, that's mean you spit at your prophet and you piss at him. If you don't agree with the post, that's mean you again spitting at yourself and spitting at your prophet and you're the Quran. Because you are Muslim. You claim that you love Jesus. Yet, just because you hate Christianity and you hate the Christians and you hate Jesus, you are willing to spit at your prophet and to pee on him. But anyway, Muslims are not better than their prophet. Their prophet, he insulted Jesus thousands of times. Actually, every single person in the Quran is an insult to Jesus, even the one they might look good to you. So if we go right now to the Quran, actually, just to show you how filthy Muhammad is, this man, son of Muda, who nobody knows who his father, he born four years after his father. Uh, if we go in, in any Kathir, let us go to any Kathir, give me a second. This is any Kathir in English. With any Kathir in English. If I read the whole page, there is nothing about Mary, the mother of Jesus. But this is the English version of it. This is the chapter 66. And supposedly we are going, you know, we will read it from verse 1 to verse 5 in this uh, internet website, from 1 to 5 as you see in the screen. But I cannot find the reference I'm looking for in English. The Muslims, because they knew that this is a website and those books printed for the sake of propaganda so they can fool the fool of us. You see, the Muslims, they invite Christians to mosque, like this guy Sabil Ahmed, the coward, he don't dare to even technically call him, and he don't dare to call him. They invite some Christians to their mosque so they can promote Islam and they use those foolish ones who they joined the Antichrist to promote Islam. The Muslims, they use them. A stupid idiot, he sit in the mosque, he do not know Islam, and then the Muslim is schooling you about your Bible and about Islam. And you sit like a chicken. So what's the purpose of your visit? To be a chicken. So those people who go to those mosques, they are really Antichrist people, even they claim to be Christians, because you are not very well versed in the Bible, and you do not know that you just entered the house of the devil, you know. Isn't it the Bible says, who is the who is Antichrist? Is the one who denied the Son and the Father. But don't those Christians know that Islam denied the Son and denied the Father? So why do they go there? Because they are devilish people, even though they claim to be Christians. Muslims will never invite someone to the mosque if he is going to demolish the mosque. Not literally by violence, but by giving real questions and real debate. They will invite you only if they are guaranteeing that you are just a fool, and they can use you as a tool. And those websites are no different. So this is a big theory in English. I could not find anything there about what I'm looking for, but I did read this book many times. What is my reference? I cannot find it. It's gone. If we go to Amikathir, in any Islamic website, we see the reference in Arabic. But I cannot find it anywhere in the English translation. This is Amikathir. Volume number two, page number 74. This is Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya. This is Amikathir Tafsir. Let us go to the Tafsir. Forget about Al-Bidaya. This is Tafsir Quran al Azim Azim Amikathir. Chapter 66, verse number 5. And this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. The Kingdom of Jordan. In English, in Arabic here, in the red, it says that uh, 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 when, when Khadija, she was dying, Muhammad, he said to his wife, don't you know that Allah, he married me? Say, you know, send my greeting. Send my greeting to Maryam and to Asiya. Asiya, in case you do not know, Muhammad always, he created his own names. He claimed that the wife of uh, uh, Ramsi is the second, you know, the Pharaoh. He claimed that his, his wife, her name is Asiya, but her name is Nafatari, and this is another, another proof that Muhammad is a scam. He gave her even actually an Arabic name, you know, she had an Arabic name. Yeah, and her father, his name is Muzahim. Totally the father of, uh, all of us, we knew that, if you read some history, Nafatari, she is a, a daughter of a king, and she is from a royal family, and her father had nothing to do with Arab, and they are not Arab. So suddenly she became an Arab, and her father, his name is Muzahim. So if we go here in this book, in this, uh, in this book uh, uh, this is Al Bidaya wa Nihaya, Ibn Kathir, volume number two, page number 74. You will see the filthy Muhammad claiming that Allah, He promised him 
to have sex with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Asiya, just because he is great. In the talk of that, he is going to have sex with the sister of Moses. Why would not find that in English? Because they knew that this is not right to show to the Christians. This is showing us that Muhammad is a pervert. He is even winning because he, you know, you know there's, there's, an, there's an internalness. So people who think that they are so great, so big, so, you know. So they start saying things, claiming things is beyond stupidity because they are pervert and the whole world is just made for them. So this filthy man Muhammad, he looked, who is the most famous woman in his time people speak of? He said to himself, okay, well, the Jews, they speak highly of the sister of Moses. And the Christian, they speak highly of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And the Jews, they speak highly of uh, the wife of Pharaoh. So I'm going to sleep with the three of them. Let us use Google Translation because uh, Abdul, he might say, Christian Prince is lying. It doesn't say that CP. Let us use Google Translation. You go down. You read. It was mentioned in the hadith that she would be one of the wives of the Prophet. Who? Who are they, those women who would be one? Maryam. The daughter of Amran. And we know that Muhammad is stupid. So he think Mary is the daughter of Amran. We know that uh, Amran is the father of Moses. So the stupid Muhammad, he could not recognize what really the real name of Mary. And he think he is confused between Maryam, the sister of Moses, and Maryam, or Mary, the mother of Jesus. But look how filthy this, this man is. So this hadith related to who? To the woman who her name is Maryam, the daughter of Amran. Peace be upon her. So they must not respect Mary. Why? Because she will be in the bed of the filthy Muhammad. I mean, can you believe how big this man is? For God has provided her and chosen her over the women of the world of her time. So because she is a chosen woman, Muhammad will have her. Can you believe how filthy, disgusting this man Muhammad? You know, if I say to a Muslim, I'm going to speak with your mother, what she will say? Especially if she is dead. She passed a long time ago. She passed away a long time ago. How that will make you angry? How filthy I will be to say such a thing? This filthy pervert, Muhammad, he is so far in his pervert madness world. You know, he want to show the people that he is the greatest in the world. To the point he want to, if every woman is famous. If Muhammad exists today, the list will be way longer of women he is going to speak with them. But aren't you disgusted to know such a thing? And what the Muslim they will say to you? They will say to you, this hadith is like, daif is accepted. This is what daif is called daif. If you say daif is accepted, if it's bad, why it's in your books? <laughs> you see, anything is an embarrassing, is filthy about their prophet in, in the world today, in the before they used to be proud about it. In the world today, they try to hide it and they try to cover it. This is why they took it off from the English translation. Look, this is the English page. All of you, you know this page. Where is the story about Maryam? Where is the story about uh, Asiya, the, the wife of Pharaoh, the, the, the wrong name? That he was going to sleep with her. Nowhere we can be found, find it. This is the same, you know, this is chapter 66, verse number 1 to 5. Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir in Arabic is different from Ibn Kathir in English. Even in Ibn Kathir in Arabic, it's mentioned in red. You see, even the Muslims, they highlighted the hadith in red. But we cannot find it in the English, English page. It's gone. If somebody of you can look again, maybe I'm wrong. But this is telling you that this man, Muhammad, is satanic and he hates Jesus to death. And he wanted to insult Jesus. This is Satan himself. I'm going to sleep with your mother, said Muhammad. He is satanic, he is demonic, he is filthy, he is what you can imagine of filth. If a prophet came after Muhammad, and he said to the Muslim, Allah, he promised me to if the mother of Muhammad. What the Muslim will say, even the mother of Muhammad, by the way, she is Najis. You see, the Muslim, they call us Najis, maybe you do not know. Najis, in the Quran, means filthy, filthy in a way you cannot be washed. If you remember once, uh, there was an, uh, a brother of us, speaking to the filthy Osman, the Ketchup boy, the one who brought the book of Osman, which says this book is impossible to be in the book of Osman. <laughs> so he tried to touch the book to hold it. He said, you can't touch it, you're Najis. So the Najis Osman, he is Najis like he's a prophet. And the Najis Allah, he called non-Muslim Najis. You see it? It's highlighted for you. This is Najis. So what the Quran says, chapter 9, verse number 28, that the mother of Muhammad, she is Najis. And the father of Muhammad is Najis. Now, you might say, well, you know, he did not say my father. Well, Muhammad for sure, he's not trying to say and speak against his father. But Muhammad here, because he's a stupid, he forgot that his father and his mother is the one who he called the Najis. So Muhammad is the son of a Najis, father, a Najis, mother, according to Muhammad's words. And they are not allowed to enter the Kaaba if Muhammad was existed at that time. And not only that, the uncle of Muhammad, which Muhammad he cried when he died. And he, by the way, he refused to convert to Islam. And here, you know, you need to ask yourself a very simple question. Why the person who is most beloved to Muhammad, the uncle who Muhammad grew in his house, why he refused to convert to Islam? Obviously, he knew that his nephew is a scam. Otherwise, there is no way. He should be proud. I mean, he is the uncle of the Prophet. But he refused to convert to Islam. For he knew that Muhammad obviously is a fraud and his religion is a fraud. 
But this man, who called anyone who is not a Muslim Najis, he insulted his parents and he confirmed that his father Najis. Actually, in different hadith, Muhammad, he confirmed how Najis Muhammad is, Muhammad's father. And he said, my father and your father is in a hellfire. My father and your father is in a hellfire. So if we go here, Muhammad, uh, he met with an Arab man. The Arab man, he said to him, where is my, where is my father? Muhammad, he said, he is in hellfire. The man, he got upset, he turned his back. So Muhammad, he said to him, your father and my father is in hellfire. Do you see it? Muhammad is coming from a sperm of a man, he is filthy, he is on fire. And the funny is that according to Muhammad, that good men, they have good children, and bad men, they have bad children. This is why the, the city Quran says that Abraham was a chosen man, and from his progeny, from his seed, will be the prophethood. And here you ask yourself, how, <laughs> you know, <laughs> how come that Abraham, uh, his, from, from, from him, all those prophets will come, and Muhammad, he is coming from the seeds of a man, he is a pagan, and his mother, she is a pagan, and both of them, they are in the fire. And then, Muhammad, he came to be, almost, and they claim that Muhammad is from Ishmael. If Muhammad is from Ishmael, then his name should be mentioned here. Do you know what I'm saying? Look, here, verse number, chapter 6, verse number 84, it mentioned who is from, who is the prophet from the seeds of Abraham. This is the Quran, the script of Quran itself. And we gave him Isaac and Jacob, each of them we guided, and we guided Noah previously, and from his descendant, David, Solomon, Job, Joseph, and Moses, and Aaron. Where is Muhammad? And where is even Ishmael? If you ask yourself, why even Muhammad here, he dropped Ishmael? Any Muslim can tell us why Muhammad he dropped Ishmael? Do we have any Muslim here who would like to tell us why Muhammad he dropped Ishmael in this verse? You see, when you count the children of somebody, you start from the elder. Is that correct? Is that correct? A Muslim will say to you, oh, later he mentioned Ishmael. If you go to just down, but <laughs> you see the stupidity, and here you notice Muhammad is messed up. And then Zechariah and John and Jesus and Elias, you know, and uh, every one of them was of the upright, and Ishmael and Elijah, like what the heck? Ishmael and Elijah? And then he mentioned names, which we never heard of them. Muslim became that Eunice is Jonah, but this is absolutely false. There's no such a name. And Lut. Uh, Lut is a prophet, you know, he's a prophet in Islam. So, uh, so where is Muhammad? Let us say for the sake of argument, now we mention Ishmael here. Where is Muhammad? Why Muhammad is not mentioned from the city of Abraham in the Quran? And you will notice here, if we ask the Muslims, what is the name of the book of Ishmael? See the Quran mentioned the books of Moses, the books of Abraham, the books of Jesus. But where is the book of Ishmael? What is the name of the book, or even the, the book of David? But nowhere mentioned that Ishmael have a book. You see, when you are a prophet, that thing you have a message. If you are a messenger, or the Muslim, because the Muslim differentiate, by the way, between the prophet and messenger, which is very stupid, because a messenger, he have a message, and the message is a prophecy. So he's a prophet. If my message from God, I am a human, speaking to a human, the message I'm delivering is from God. It is a prophecy, nobody knows it except the prophet, who the first prophet told him, which is God. The first prophet is God. The real prophet, actually, the one who really prophesies is God. The human being is, we call him prophet because he carried the prophecy, but he is not really a prophet. So, when Muhammad mentioned the name of Ishmael, where is Muhammad in the list? Remember, all of those are coming from Abraham. Where is Muhammad? He mentioned all the names, he did not mention himself. Here you see, and from their ancestors, and their descendant, and their sibling, we chose them and guided them to straight path. If Muhammad is from Ishmael, the Quran here have a contradiction. We just showed you that Muhammad's father is in a hellfire. Is that correct? But are you guys following me? If the Quran promising that the children of Abraham and the children of those who they are uh, going to be prophets, those are, are guided by Allah. So Muhammad himself, in order to be born of Ishmael, as he claimed, Allah, he promised that their children and their sibling, they will be guided by Allah. So how Muhammad's father and his mother, both of them, they are pagan and they are in hellfire. So according to the Quran, Muhammad is filthy, he is not just, and that's why he kills the black stone. But today I wanted to, you know, to, to focus with you in how Muslims they deceive you when they speak about they respect Jesus, they respect Mary. In fact, Mary, in Islam, she is just a sex toy for Muhammad. The filthy Muhammad, he has tons of women, a lot of sex slaves. He sent his wife to visit her parents. He told her, your father is looking for you, he want to talk to you. She went there, <laughs> and, then, and then after she went there, the father told her, oh, why are you here? You know, so he can, if, excuse my language, the maid, the slave, the woman she came back right home, she felt something suspicious, and she screamed at him, and she found him on the top of her. She said, in my house, in my bed, you filthy son of Muhammad. And actually, the verse we read for you in chapter 66, verse 1 to 5, is about this. And this is where it's mentioned in the Tafsir that Allah, He promised Muhammad not only those women on earth to F them, even the following women who they are famous. But studying those verses in the front of us show us clearly that Muhammad is a false prophet. And actually, there's more proofs. We mentioned it before. Anyone remember what is the additional proof we have that Muhammad, according to the Quran, cannot be a prophet of Allah? Any lie about Ishmael and Abraham? Do you remember? Let's see who a few can help me. Where in the Quran, where in the Europe of Muhammad, we can find the proof. That Muhammad he lied when he claimed that the one who built the Kaaba is, or rebuilt the Kaaba, is Abraham and his son Ishmael. Anyone remember? Let's go to the Quran. I don't know, maybe it might take time for my voice to come to your side, but it's okay. I will not wait for you to 
uh, to, to answer in the chat because I know there's a delay depending where you live and how good the internet. Uh, Muhammad is a fool, as usual. And I'm so, I'm, actually, I'm so grateful that Muhammad is really stupid. You know, when Muhammad, he spoke about himself, that he sent, he was sent to be a messenger of Allah. To who? The Quran confirmed uh, to Mecca and what around it, not to the whole world. To Mecca and what around it, that's it. In chapter uh, uh, 34, verse number 44, it says, And we gave them, but we gave them no book to study, and we did not send them any warner before you. What does that mean? That means the liar Muhammad, he lied when he said that Abraham and Ishmael, they were in Mecca, and they are the one who built the Kaaba. And they were a prophet. And if the Muslim claim that Ishmael, he lived there, he married, and he lived there. And Ishmael was a prophet. So how there are no books? And, 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 and Abraham is a prophet. If we go now, again to the yellow pages. <coughs> Chapter 2, verse 127 says that the one who raised the base of, uh, uh, like, you know, the, uh, you know, the Qawaiid is like not even, uh, like, you know, the first rocks you put in the ground, under the ground. This is, this is Qawaiid, which means the base of building. The one who put it there is Abraham, which is a contradiction because Muhammad claimed a different place that the first one who built the Kaaba was the angels. But here it says, he raised up the base of the, of, of the house and with him Ishmael. All right? And then he says, our Lord make us Muslims, not submissive, surrender, Muslims, we surrender to you. And from our descendant, a community of surrender to you. Okay. So, Ishmael. Ishmael is, is a prophet. Abraham is a prophet. And they are the one who started the city of Mecca. How the other verse in the Quran says there's no war nor came before you. And then here it says, Our Lord raise up among them a messenger of themselves, who will recite to them your revelation and teach them the book and wisdom and purify them. You are the Almighty and all wise. Look what happened here. The stupidity is beyond stupidity. Abraham and Ishmael, they are asking Allah to raise a prophet from them. So who, what, what Abraham and Ishmael were doing? Drinking Coca-Cola? <laughs> we have two prophets, according to Muslim, Ishmael is a prophet. We have two prophets in towns. And two prophets in towns asking Allah to send a prophet from us. They're praying to Allah, send a prophet, please. We need prophet. You know, and then we go to different to the other verse. I hope you guys are taking notes. We are reading now chapter uh, chapter two, and we read it from verse one twenty-seven, one twenty-eight, one twenty-nine. We go to the other verse, chapter thirty-four, verse number forty-four. It says, "We never send them books before you." Now, uh, do uh, do Abraham have a book? Yeah, the Quran says, "Sohuf Ibrahim." Chapter eighty-seven. I mean, this this book is hilarious, isn't it? The scriptures of Abraham and Moses. Okay, so Abraham is confirmed that he has scriptures in the book. And Abraham, he is the one who built the Kaaba. And his child is Ishmael. He is a prophet too. That's mean he has scriptures too. Did Abraham give his son Ishmael the scriptures? Question to the Muslims. If they say no, that would be really hilarious. If they say yes, this is even more hilarious. Because in either way, Muhammad is a fraud. How you say, okay, and send us, you know, rise among us. Among them. Huh? Uh, among who? Our children. Okay. A messenger. Not a prophet. The prior is for a messenger. Remember, the Muslims, they make a differentiation between messenger and prophet. A messenger. Okay. Who will recite your verses to them. Okay. And he teach in the book and the wisdom. But Muhammad, he did not teach the book. Muhammad, he could not explain the book. And he did not teach wisdom. He teaches stupidity for sure. And there it says, if you read with me, just to show you how stupid this religion is. And Abraham exhorted his sons. And Jacob, oh my son, Allah has chosen this religion for you. So don't die unless you have submitted. What the heck is that? Abraham, he told his sons and Jacob. Abraham, he told his sons and Jacob. Same, all my, my sons. All my sons. So the first part is who? Abraham told his sons and Jacob. <laughs> I don't know actually, I get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so is Jacob one of his sons or is not? <laughs> oh, imagine. Uh, you say, let's say you have three kids, four kids, five kids, whatever. And then you say, I told my sons. And then you mention a name. And this guy. But that means this guy is not your son. You know what I mean? Uh, somebody reference, no, he will marry those famous women. Sure, I can give you the reference right away. Okay, here we go. Uh, before we move. Uh, okay, this is, actually, let me, hold on, give me a second. So I can shorten the link for you. Uh, let me, because, you know, in the top there is like Arabic names. I don't think they will go through YouTube. But I can try, let me see. Maybe if I post it without shortening the link, it's going to work. Oh, it's not, it's not going to work. And hold on. It comes like a thousand line. Let me try. Did the comment go through? Oh no. Yeah, I see the comment is cut to pieces. Uh, okay, let me do this. I will do a link shorten. Sure. Shorten your. Okay. Uh, be sure to save it and, you know, make a. Uh, like when you save it and your favorite, uh, write a note. It's about what? So later you will find it. You know? Uh, later you will know where to find it and what, uh, what it's about. Okay, let's see now. Let me know, please, if you were able to, uh, to open the link. 
Does it work? If not, I will use a different website to shorten the link. Didn't work? Okay. Let me try a different website then. Give me a second. Yeah, you know, there's many of those websites. They lie. They, you know, they claim that they are, they shorten links for you, but they are a scam. Uh, let us try this one. Okay, let's see this one. It worked for you? Okay, what about this one? Do this one work? Okay, try the second link. Let's see if it's going to work. All right. And for sure, you can use, you know, Google Translation. But in, in order to use Google Translation, as you know, you have to open it in Google Browser because Google product work only with Google product. So Google Translation is a Google product. If you open it like you know, any other browser, it will not work. So be sure you, you know, you use Google Translation. And you see there, there's a page number. There's a value number. They can't lie about it. You know what I mean? You see, that, uh, this, this is a Shia website, but the Nikathir is Sunni. Remember that. This is a Shia library. But the book is a Nikathir. Very, very, very Sunni. Uh, filthy man. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's Shia or not. The other one is not Shia. Who cares? I can, I can give you the same book from the website. doesn't matter. This is a book. This is not a website. We are not, we are not sharing a uh, website. We are sharing a book. What we care for, Ibn Kathir. But this is the book of Ibn Kathir. This is the book of Sunni. Not the book of Shia. This is another book of Shia. The beginning at the end, Ibn Kathir, part 2, page number 74. So if somebody says to you, this is Shia, he's being stupid. This is Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir is a Muslim Sunni. He supports terrorism. All right. Uh, all right. So as you see, you know, Muhammad, uh, you know, there's, actually there's many Christian churches because of their ignorance. What they say? How many of you heard before a Christian minister saying to you that uh, 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 Muhammad is from Ishmael? How many? Many, right? That because of their ignorance. And most of them they use that actually to promote their prophet. They say, you see, we are from, from Abraham. In fact, Muhammad is anti-Abraham, anti-Jesus, anti-Jews. I mean, a guy he went, he's from Abraham. Why he went to the Jews? According to Muhammad, Christ is going to kill every single Jew. Christ will meet 70,000 Jew in the gate of Damascus and all of them they have swords covered by gold. And then Jesus will kill the Dajjal and he will kill all and a single Jew. Not a single Jew will stay alive. So if a person is claiming to be Abrahamic, why do you want to kill the Jews? When you say not a single Jew, actually, you know, somebody might say to you, well, we can't find this hadith. Let me, let me, I just remember it. You know, sometimes, like, you know, you have, you have to touch the library in the head to, so you can get the reference. Like, 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 like the memory will wake up. Uh, let me see where I can find the hadith. Okay. Yeah, well, this is, this is a very long hadith, actually. Let us show it with you on the screen. Uh, let us zoom in. And let us search for the part right away, where it says 70. Here we go. So the Dajjal, he will come and he have 70,000 Jews, each one of them carrying an uh, adorned sword and wearing greenish a cloak with the Dajjal. So this is the Jews, they are going to come, and who is going to face them is going to be Isa, which means Jesus, supposedly. Isa ibn Maryam will come down, it will come down to them. So according to Muhammad the Dajjal, his army is an army of the Jews. And the Messiah will come in the gate. You remember two days ago we showed you the gate. You remember the Abdul who said the Manarat is where Jesus will be landing? Do you remember? Just two days ago, in the previous video, you can watch it. So uh, uh, Jesus will land in there, and Jesus will change the Dajjal and he will kill him, cowboy, you know. And then uh, Jesus he will order, he will slaughter every single Jew, as you see, who they are seventy thousand. Uh, it's, it's very weird. I mean, Muhammad is stuck with number 70. 77 is, is a plus number, supposedly. Here, seventy is a different number. Uh, so they will, uh, yeah, they will. Uh, uh, he will say, uh, Isa, he will say, uh, open the gate, and he, uh, they will open it, and behind it will be the Dajjal. And here you see how stupid Muhammad is. According to Muhammad, that Isa, he will be landing behind the gate of Damascus, and the gate of Damascus is closed the door. Let me show you the gate of Damascus so we can laugh better. <laughs> you know, now we are talking about long-range missiles. We are talking about a nuclear, you know, weapon. We are talking about Star Wars weapon, and Muhammad talking about the Dajjal fighting Jesus from behind, and Jesus is behind the door, and he say, "Open the door, so we can fight." You know, okay. <laughs> he must be a true prophet. So, according to the stupid Muhammad, let us show you. Uh, I'm just looking for a, a clear picture. Big side, a little bit. This one is at night. We don't want it. We want something in daytime. Let us see. All right, we found a picture. So Jesus will land behind the gate. You see where the people here? Jesus will land there. And Jesus, I mean, look at this gate. Who in the world will believe in Muhammad to be a prophet? We are now in the year, you know, 2,000 years after Jesus, in the time of spaceship, space war, uh, cyber attack, uh, drones, and Muhammad talking about Jesus will land behind the door and he will ask him to open the door so he can fight the Dajjal. And the Dajjal, he has 70,000 with him, all of them they are Jews and they have swords. 
So look like what will happen. And yeah, exactly, a wise man. Why the location? Well, wise man, he's asking a good question. He's a wise man. What do you expect? Why the location got moved from Jerusalem to the Mosque? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> the airport is there. <laughs> so 70,000 Jews, they have swords, and they are going to fight and the Dajjal with them, and Jesus, he will ask them to open the gate so he can fight the Dajjal. Who is a Muslim here can tell us how laughable this in 2022, soon 23? What the heck is that? 70,000 Jews with swords? Are you sure, Muslims? Are you sure that the Dajjal will not come with RBG, B7, and maybe the Isa, the Muslim Isa, he will use maybe the Russian T7, 2072, or him or the American swords? Hmm. The Dajjal in English, the Dajjal is not an English word, I know of it, uh, it's mean the liar. The Dajjal is not just a liar, actually. It's like, you know, this is what he do for a living, he lie, you know. They lie uh, to make a living, you know. Everything in his life is a lie, right? Uh, but this is Muhammad, here we go, we prove that Muhammad is Dajjal. Look at this, look at this lie. So Jesus will come and he will fight the Jews, and he, there are 70,000, and the only one left in the world at that time will be 70,000 Jews, all of them have swords. Do we have any Muslim have anything to say? Now, if you want the, uh, the, the reference for this hadith, who want the reference for the hadith? Because later you might ask me, uh, what is this hadith? Here we can find it. Let me show you the reference. Let me, let me give you the link, hold on. You know? uh, and by the way, the Muslim, they will say to you, this is daif. However, we can find a better version of it. It is going to be more hilarious. So if they say daif, we will find you something more strong. This is the hadith. Save it to your... Uh, yeah. But look here what will happen. I mean, if you read this hadith, actually, it's, it's, this man, Muhammad, is really mentally up. Uh, it says here that Quraysh will lose it is uh, uh, ruling. <laughs> the Quraysh lost their rule a long time ago. <laughs> Who's <with> Quraysh? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, if, you, if you read actually, I advise you to read it. I mean, this is really. And Jesus will kill the pig. You know, Jesus, he will break the cross. He will slaughter the pig, which is very important, by the way. I mean, I mean, Jesus is really not busy. He has a lot of time. So, like, he go, he say, hey, pig, where are you? And, you know, the pig, mm, I'm here. Okay, we will count to three. The one who draw his gun first. You know, he is the fastest. And, you know, okay. So, the pig, he will turn his back. Anyway, what a silly, stupid religion. Jesus will come to and abolish the jizya. So Jesus will not, you know, will stop taking jizya. But nobody pays jizya no more. Long time ago. And not only that. Money will be left in the floor. Nobody will collect the money. Nobody will collect the money. Nobody need money. Uh, and even a snake, will, if, you know, if a baby boy, he holds a snake, the snake will not harm him. Because Jesus is there. You know, that's it. Jesus is ruling the earth. So snakes and humans, they will be friends again. And if the baby boy, his hand, he holds a snake, the snake will give him a hug. Like, you know, you're so cute. You know, all of this should happen. Right when Quraysh lose their, their ruling, which happened a long time ago, uh, what the, uh, you know, uh, Quraysh, uh, the last time Quraysh, they have ruling, it was the Umayyad, you know, and after that, uh, that's it, they are, they are gone. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, the other day, I almost like, I hold a snake, you know, and the snake, he said, it's, it's in the city. I like, you know, can you give me autograph? So I get, I said, I don't have a pen. So she gave me her pair, and I signed in her, uh, in her back, you know, uh, uh, like, a, like an autograph. And then she came second year, by the way, and she said, I said, well, you know, she said, can you sign again? I said, what the heck? Again? She said, don't you know I changed my skin? Yeah. So now, like we made an agreement, I put a sticker in her back. <laughs> I told her to print a sticker to go to like a printing shop, print a sticker of my uh, autograph, and each time she changed her, uh, you know, her skin, she put the new sticker. Okay, yeah. So true story. Sahih Bukhari. Uh, this is Muhammad. And then, uh, and the baby girl will make a lion run away. That must be Nancy Belusi when she was baby. I mean, let us face it. A baby girl will make a lion run because of her smell. Uh, who is she? She must be Nancy Belusi. I mean, what, what this guy is talking about? And all of this would happen when people are still using swords, and the mascots had a gate, and the door is closed. Anyway, if you if you if you read those things, you will die laughing. Okay, and the wolf will be among the sheep. We are in heaven, man. I mean, look at this. And the wolf will be among the sheep, like their sheep dogs. So what the wolf will eat? Hummus. Wolf will eat what? He will go to the restaurant. He said to him, "Give me shish kebab. Give me shawarma." He became Hindu. He is a vegeta vegetarian now. <laughs> uh, anyway, the same hadith. Like you know, if we look, because most of them might say, "The others." Uh, uh, you know, uh, they are not. This is not very accurate. Hadith is daif, but daif is accepted. This is called daif. Uh, daif is a rank for accepted hadith, not rejected one. Uh, let us see. Uh, uh, look, look what he said about the Persian. Oh boy. Uh, uh, this is not. Uh, uh, you can see different hadith about the Persian when he mentioned them. <coughs> let us first find this one. Uh, let us see here. Which part we will copy? Let us find the Jew part. Yeah, and here there is a, there's a tree. When the Jews, they try to hide, there's a tree. Only this tree, because it's an evil tree. This is a very evil tree, brother. Everything, stones, rocks, everything, if a Jew, he hide behind them. The tree, the rock, the stone, the mountain, the hills, the grass, will say, there's a Jew behind me. Kill him. However, there is one tree. One tree. As you see here. So, 
and nothing. Uh, so then they will be defeated, the, defeated Jews, and there will be nothing left that Allah has created, which the Jew will be able to hide behind, except that Allah will cause it to speak. No stone, no tree, no wall, no animal, even animal, chicken. There's a Jew behind me. Oh, 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 there's a Jew behind me. Except Al-Ghaddaq. Al-Ghaddaq is the name of a tree. For it is the one, and here they said the box thrown, uh, for it is the one of their trees. So this is one of the trees the Jews they love, and she loved the Jews. Okay, so she will try to hide them. It will not speak. So this tree will not say there's a Jew. Okay? Except that all they will say, O oh, Muslim slave of Allah, there here is a Jew. Come and kill him. Why, why Joe Biden don't quote those verses? He's quoting Muhammad. You know, the fifth Joe Biden is come back. Why he don't quote? I mean, he's quoting the one. He's quoting, and the funny, by the way, the Jews, they vote for him. 95% of the Jews in the USA, they vote for Democrats, in case you not know. Very little number, they vote for Republican. That is because, you know, they're ignorance. They don't know what they're voting for. They're voting for their destruction. Uh, so here, let's try to take this part and see if we can find it in different location. Here we go. Now here, the Muslim, they can't say this is weak. This is Sahih Muslim. This is Sahih Muslim. This is Sunnah Majah. This is the long one. You know, we the one we mentioned. Uh, this is Sahih. This is Sahih. This is Sahih. This is Sahih. Uh, yeah, this is a different one actually. Yeah. Let us see this one here. Yeah, I just have to find. So do you see how many times the hadith appear? Uh, however, the Muslims always, they try always to deny the false prophethood of Muhammad because every hadith actually, every person of the Quran proving Muhammad to be false. And this is why we change the Muslims and even there actually, to let us uh, have a real debate. Uh, you see only kids, you know, trying to insult uh, with the post as we show you today. But in reality, all Muslims they agree with one thing, that insulting Jesus and downgrading Jesus as Muhammad he did. Because when Muhammad he says, Jesus is just nobody, he, I am the greatest, he insulted Jesus. He insulted our God. And uh, he is trying to replace actually the place of Jesus. You see, when Muhammad he called himself Muhammad, what Muhammad mean? The praised one. Who is the praised one? God. The Muslim they claim that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah and he is just a prophet of Allah. So why his name is the praised one? Who is the praised two? Allah himself in the Quran praised Muhammad and pray on Muhammad. You see, when the Quran says that Allah and the angels and the believers and every Muslim and every angel pray on Muhammad. Pray on Muhammad. This is why the Hijabi says, pray two, not four. You know, pray four, not two. Uh, which make a difference, supposedly. But at the end of the day, Allah is praying. And the angels are praying for Muhammad according to the Majesty in the Hijab. So here we know we see that Muhammad in every statement he tried to replace Jesus, he's insulting Jesus. He wants to sleep with his mother, as Allah he promised him, because he's Satan. And uh, Jesus is nobody. His book is gone. His book is corrupted. Jesus was, according to Muslim, a big failure. Abraham was a failure. Moses was a failure. Why? Because all the books are corrupted. So all the names before Muhammad, they have a failure, which means they accomplish nothing. That is an insult to every one of them, because it's absolutely false and it's a big fat lie. Muhammad is the one who replaced all the prophets. And Muhammad even he claimed uh, there's, there's a very famous hadith, Muhammad or collection of hadith actually, where Muhammad he said that uh, according to him, uh, if not him, Allah will never create the universe. Let us show you the, some reference. I chat with the Muslim now. They are asking, do you want to chat with the Muslim now? If I chat with them, we will die laughing, shall I? Chat with the Muslim now. Yeah, right. I'll deploy this thing. Okay. Uh, this thing will kind of keep coming in my head, uh, face. Okay, how we can get out of it? Oh boy, let's uh, find a different website. They want to force you to chat with them. Let's see this page. Uh, let me know if, if the page is not clear for you. Is it good? I'll try to zoom more. If not you, Muhammad, and as you see, the Muslim, the Adam, Arabic, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which means Allah, pray on him and salute him. I would not have a created creation. So you see the, the purpose of Muhammad? Isn't it the Bible says everything was created by him and for him? That is Jesus. You know that verse, right? Everything was created by him and for him. Muhammad is trying to replace Jesus. If not you, Muhammad, I would not have a created creation, which means here Muhammad is claiming that God himself is exists just for him. The existence, the reason for Allah to be exist, why Allah exists? What is the purpose of Allah? For Muhammad. Why Allah created things? For Muhammad. What are Allah trying to do? He's trying to make Muhammad happy. You see, if there is someone, they call him Allah, and he is God supposedly, but this God, 24 hours, 7 days a week, he works so hard just to satisfy Muhammad. So who is the God? All right? Yeah, the first thing Allah actually did when he wrote, when he created, he created the pen. And the chair, and then he said to himself, depending on the hadith, Muhammad, you cannot repeat the same story twice correctly as usual. So he created the pen and he, and he, and he wrote Muhammad's name on his chair. He said, There's no God but Allah, and Muhammad is a messenger. So, and this is what, by the way, what paganism is about. Mushrikim, Muslim, Mushrikim, Mushrik in Arabic mean the one who associates a man or an idol with God. This is what Mushrikim mean. Uh, but Muhammad, obviously, the Muslims, they associate his name with God every day. Allah himself is a Mushrik. But how here you notice that Muhammad, he subjugated God to be his servant. The Muslims, they claim that Muhammad is a slave and servant of Allah. Who create things to who? Who serve who? Is Muhammad serving Allah or Allah is serving Muhammad? The hadith in front of you. And not only that, Muhammad, he go far in his lies and he says, look, this is the answer. Somebody asking, is this is correct? 
Is that true? It says here. The answer, indeed, this is the answer of the scholars, the Muslim scholars. Indeed, the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the reason for the creation of Adam. Adam himself was created because of Muhammad. And the universe, indeed, do you see the answer? This is the Muslim belief. You can read the rest by yourself. Oh, what you need to do, by the way, I mean, this exists in many words. I just search uh, for this title uh, here. Oh, here, actually, this is even better. Lawlaka, lawlaka, ma khalaqa al-aflaq. Let me try to zoom in more, I don't know if I can do that. You know, uh, I cannot zoom more in this uh, thing here. Let's see, no, it doesn't work. Maybe now, I don't know. Okay, maybe now. All right, I think now it's, it's, it's big, right? Yeah, you can type exactly the same in English, use English, you know, uh, in Google, and you'll find tons of Muslim websites about it. And they're copying each other. You know, the Muslim definition of copy paste, as usual. So, uh, if not indeed, indeed, I mean, there's no need even to question that. Indeed, the reason, the reason for creating the universe, uh, Adam himself, you, me, spiders, cats, rats, mosquitoes, flowers, trees, river, sea, ocean, fish, everything, air, water, gas, farting, everything, if not Muhammad, will not be created. He is the reason for the creation, indeed, as you see. And then even they, they say that Muhammad, Allah told uh, Isa, which means supposedly Jesus, he told him, tell your people to believe in Muhammad, for he is the reason, let us see. Here we go, me. Allah revealed to Prophet Isa, alayhi salam, that he, he will sound like Muslim, they respect to Isa, right? But no, this is the evil of Islam. They use the name of Jesus, which is the wrong name. They use his name just to fool the foolish one of us. To say, oh, you see, we believe in Muslims, we believe in Abraham. So Allah revealed to his Prophet Isa. And you will notice that the Muslims, they don't say when they say uh, Isa, they don't say sallallahu alayhi wasallam. they say peace upon him. Only Muhammad says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For the Quran says, Allah pray on him and salute him. Uh, have faith, Iman in Muhammad. Muhammad. Jesus have to believe in Muhammad. And order your Ummah, which means your nation, to do the same. If Muhammad was not in existence, I would not have created Adam, nor I would have made heaven or hell. Also, you know, you can read the rest. So you see here, those people, they worship this filthy man, the pervert Muhammad, who was a child molester, who insulted Jesus, who went to sleep with Mary, who, uh, who accused Abraham to be a scam, accused all prophecy to be false, and all their work is gone. It's just to praise him. And he is so mentally ill to the point he went to sleep with women who died thousands of years before him like the wife of the Pharaoh, and he claimed that he would have the best location, a corner lot in the heaven of Allah, and he would have the highest rank from Allah, and yet he asked the Muslims to pray for him, so Allah will give him a higher rank. And that will prove again that he is a scam, because if you are, if Allah created everything for you, why are you asking the Muslims to pray for you to have the highest rank? I mean, this is stupidity. If I am already granted, if I am already granted to have a high rank, why am I asking the Muslims to pray for me? Do we have a Muslim who wants to say anything? Is he given uh, uh, already not you know like a, a, a rank or not? Hmm? Are you Muslim? Look like we don't have any Muslim no more. This is why YouTube defend them because they you know he think they are protected species. In chapter 17, verse number 79, it says, And keep vigil with it during parts of the night as an extra prayer. Perhaps your Lord will rise you to a laudable position. Can you believe it? Perhaps. And then he say, Say this, My Lord, lead me in thought and enter you of the truth. And lead me out. Allah is telling him to say that. So what's the point of saying it? Actually, if we look here, this word in Arabic, Asa, Asa is one of the most funny words used in the Quran, which means perhaps, maybe. If you just like search for this word. Oh, we did not copy it correctly. Let's copy it again. Maybe the mouse is not copying correctly. Let's try again. How do we type it? But just to show you, I'm copying the exact word. And that will show you how scam this man is. Have you ever heard of a God he keeps saying perhaps? Look at this. Chapter 4, verse number 84. It says, Encourage the believer to fight. Arose then. Maybe, perhaps Allah will restrain the might of those. What? Who's talking? <laughs> what do you mean, maybe? You know, guys, do you understand what I'm saying? If I am God, and I'm telling you to do this, why am I saying maybe? Maybe. This is the God, Mr. Maybe. This is, oh, this is tons of verses. I mean, the Quran is full of maybe. But the additional proof that Islam cannot be from God. I mean, it's God he, he himself, he used maybe. Chapter 4, verse number 99, it says, These Allah will burden them, and is burdening and forgiving. But you see, look, uh, sorry, Allah may well burden them. Oh, well, I thought maybe they took it off to lie. May well. He will or will not? Maybe? Other words. Chapter 7. You can check them yourself and you will die laughing. Chapter 7, 129. Is the page here, guys? Let me zoom in. 7, 185. Maybe their, their time is up. Maybe? Allah is saying maybe, you know? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> their time may have drawn near. Maybe? What the heck is that? Mr. Maybe. Uh, 
chapter 9, verse 102, maybe Allah will, uh, will accept their repentance. But who's talking? Perhaps Allah? Who's talking? Isn't it obvious that this is a guy who's writing his own writing? You know, did Jesus say to the sinner women, maybe I will not condemn you? Did Jesus say, go and your sin is forgiven? As many verses in the Bible. Or he said, maybe your sin will be forgiven. Here you see that when Muhammad he speak as a, in the Muslim city of the Quran, many places written as a third person talking, but that, that doesn't work. Because the one is talking, doesn't matter, you're making third person, second person, doesn't matter. Here it is about confirmation of forgiveness or not. When you say maybe, that means Allah does not know the future, if he is the one talking, and that will not make him God. The Muslim declare Allah, you know the future. And actually, this is a destiny. So what forgiveness? Everything is destiny. So when you say maybe, it means the one is talking, he himself is not sure, and there's no confirm confirmation about what they will have. Maybe. And you know, the, the story continues from place to place. You know? Okay. Maybe your Lord will have mercy on you. Maybe your Lord, will, you know, he will, uh, chapter 17, verse number 79, Allah saying to Muhammad, maybe Allah will give you a high rank. Maybe, maybe, yeah. And maybe my, my God say, and the funny, Allah saying to them, say maybe. <laughs> uh, actually, this is one of the funny verses in the Quran. Yeah, more of them. Yeah. Look at this one, chapter 66 about Muhammad. When Muhammad, he, uh, his wife, he discovered that he is cheating and he's sleeping around and he just come back. So Allah, he says, maybe, Maybe if Allah, uh, uh, the Lord of Muhammad, uh, divorce you, exchange the wives with better than you. Maybe. Will do Allah on you if he will divorce them or not? What maybe? And as long as there's women better than them, what, what are you waiting for? And the funny is the Quran says in a different place that bad women, they marry bad men, and good women, they marry good men. This verse is stating that the wives of Muhammad they are bad, very bad, to the point he accused them that they are kuffar. It says here, if you repent, then your heart have listened. But if you band together against him, Actually, the, the, the translation is very wrong. This is not this, and this is a very stupid translation. You know, uh, mean their heart uh, become close to kuffar. They are kuffar. Let's change the translation. See, it's going to, they will keep it the same. Just give it a try, just to show you how they lie when they translate. Let's see, uh, Yusuf Ali. Hmm. See, look what happened. The other one, he says, listen, right? Did I read wrong? No, I don't think so. Your heart are indeed inclined. So the Quran described the wives of Muhammad that they are now, they have the heart of kuffar, evil, they are bad people. But if you go to the different verse of the Quran, you will find this. The stupid Muhammad he made the verse, claiming. Uh, let us see. It's taking forever. Okay, let us make it easier. Yeah. Uh, if we read this verse, I'll wait for the screen. Read this one, and if you are Muslim, you tell me how stupid Muhammad is. I challenge you to tell me he is not. This is chapter 24, verse number 26. Bad women for bad men, and bad men for bad women, which is very stupid to repeat, you know, because you just said, bad women for bad men, obviously you mentioned already that they are bad men, so why are you repeating the same thing? Does it make a difference really? Just think about it. You know, in Arabic we say we call a person who speaks too much, repeat the same thing, we call him Thalthar, Thalthar, which means blah, 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 you know, you talk too much, you say nothing. So, bad women for bad men, and bad men for bad women. This is talking about marriage. So when a man he marries a bad woman, obviously he's bad. Allah made a destiny. This is about destiny, by the way. So Allah he made a destiny that only bad women they will marry bad men and only bad men will marry bad women and good women are for good men. So you see the are destiny and good men are for good women. Okay, let's go back to the chapter one, chapter 66. <laughs> the wives of Muhammad, they are hookers. <laughs> Not only that actually, the Quran says that the wife of Lot, she was a whore. She betrayed her husband. So how bad men for bad women and bad women for bad men and good women are for good men. Do you see it? And absolutely this is false. How many women they marry a bad man? There's many. And how many men they marry bad women? But they are good men. So, you know, we witness everything in life. There's a woman, she's a wonderful woman. The husband just came back. There's millions of them. Do you agree? And the opposite. There's many of good men, very bad women. So this is this is a phrase proving that the one who wrote the Quran is a donkey. And as, as long as he claimed that this is a destiny. I mean, so why the bad man is bad man? Because Allah made him bad man. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it is wrong. It doesn't matter how you try to fix it or back it. It is absolutely stupid and wrong. Anyone have a question? Look how quiet the Muslims are. They are not even, they don't dare to complain. Uh, take a sword, you want to challenge me? Go ahead, challenge me. You, you want to challenge me? Now? What are you waiting for? Give us the answer. Give us the answer. I will put it on the screen. Go ahead. Bad women for bad men. I accepted the challenge. You are the hero. You are like Muhammad. When he poop, the earth open her mouth and take his poop because it's so yummy. If you want, I can show you the difference. So you can poop as much as you want. I will put it on the screen. And the screen will eat it because it's so yummy. What's your answer? Go ahead. 
I mean, have you ever heard of somebody? People they claim he is just a prophet, he's a man like everybody. And then when he poop, the earth open and eat his poop? Like yum yum? Have you ever heard of someone when he pee, his pee, his piss is a perfume? And they say to you, we don't worship Muhammad. Have you ever heard of someone, he washes underwear and the Muslim they fight over the water of his underwear, the laundry water? Have you ever heard of people fighting over the spat of Muhammad? Have you ever heard of a man, they drink his blood literally? Have you ever heard of the woman, she was cleaning the room of Muhammad? She found a dish under his bed. He pisses at night, he don't go out, he's lazy. He pisses, he put the dish underneath. The woman, she drank his piss. And then Muhammad, he says, when he, he said, where's the, you know, he says, I drank it. He said, Allah bless you, you your, your hell, the fire will never touch your stomach. This is Muhammad. Anyone challenge me? Go ahead. Did this guy post an answer, guys? This is our question. The Quran says, good men for good women, bad women for bad men, it's a destiny. Is that accurate in this earth, or this is a fraud? Very simple. Go ahead. Do you agree? Uh, how many of you are, are, are in your first time? If you are first time here, seriously, no, don't, don't put one if you are not. If you are here first time, give us one, please. 